we see that in microarray, uh, the process of hybridization is important. So we have DNA to DNA hybridization or DNA to RNA. Uh, so whatever the case may be, uh, let's see how we design these arrays. So the DNA is deposited on the slide by different methods. One is printing. So with what is an inkjet print, inkjet printer is used. We do have a spotting method in which we have uh, robots uh, which are having set of fine tip pins. So with the with the help of those robots, uh, we can put or transfer that and those cDNAs or DNAs into those uh, those slides. Now we call this as spotted array, this technique. So here we see the inkjet. We have uh, Canon technology, HP Canon technology. So we see those or uh, those those uh, DNA are spotted or shooted uh, through these pins, through these kind of those. They are printed on the slide. In spotting, the DNA is attached to a solid spot, uh, glass, plastic or nylon. Uh, RNA is labeled, so which is uh, usually indirectly uh, labeled so in this way we uh, when we hybridize them we see that the bound uh, this bound DNA is the probe uh, which is actually present on the slide whereas the labeled RNA is the target so probe target the probe is uh, present on the slide so which is uh, actually transferred uh, with the help of those reports or with the help of those printers so here we see the spotting printer so we see there is a robot or there is a machine and we see down there there are the slides and it in this we have those large number of pins which are actually transferring this uh, DNA to those slides and then that DNA has uh, capacity to get attached to those glass present in that slide. This commercial spotter we see that uh, this is a picture of this commercial spotter so we have a large number of slides which are present and then those the spotter is actually with the help of those pins it's transferring into each of those slides, those probe cDNAs. In uh, Fematrix gene chips, uh, we have oligonucleotides which are uh, synthesized on silicon chips. Uh, one base is transferred at a time and it uses the process of uh, photolithography uh, which is actually developed for printing those computer circuits. And oligonucleotides for each genes are selected by different computer programs. So depending upon a good oligo should be unique in that uh, particular uh, genome or in, in uh, it should be unique in capturing those uh, typical genes and then if, if we do not have those unique uh, these these probes are not unique so then there will be we, we can have the cross hybridization so we can uh, it, it will be hard for us to distinguish um, between two or three genes so they may go and, uh, and their messenger RNA can go and uh, get attached to the same spots and these um, also should be non-overlapping, these oligonucleotides. So in FA matrix, each gene is represented by a probe set, uh, which is consisting of 12 to 20 probes. Each of them is 25 nucleotide length. Each probe has a corresponding mismatch probe uh, with a single base difference at the 13 nucleotide. Labeled RNA is hybridized to the array and abundance is calculated using hybridization for the entire probe set correcting the mismatch probes which actually indicate the non-specific effect. So we do have a mismatch over there. So that tells us if we can have a relative abundance between the match pairs versus the mismatched pairs. So in this way we can correct for those mismatching probes. So here is the chip that looks like this. And here are we can have those probes which are present in two layers. So here we see in this diagram a little detail about how these probes are prepared. So we have 12 to 20 per gene and these probes are prepared. Uh, they may be covering the whole genes or some important, mostly it takes the important regions of those genes. So we take that messenger RNA and for that uh, down below you can see we do have a match oligo, this one. And then we have a mismatch uh, where we have just one nucleotide is mismatching. So they are arranged in actually two layers. If you look down below, so we can have a fluorescent intensity image which is coming from them. So we have those probe pairs. So on the top layer, the white ones are where we have those perfectly matched probe cells. And then in the bottom layer, we have the mismatch probe cells. So in this way, it's kind of uh, helping normalization of this data or correcting for those mismatch pairs.
Unlike uh, those uh, glass-based uh, arrays, uh, these uh, Affymatrix chips, uh, we can uh, analyze only one sample. So, we cannot actually compare two samples. But obviously, for one sample, you can get the results and you can take another sample, run it on a chip, and then you can compare the results with one another. So, no direct comparison, guys. Uh, but the good point is that this uh, procedure is a standardized protocol. Uh, since they keep on improving their technologies, they keep on doing their R&Ds and this FE matrix has been a good company uh, which has been the prominent among those microarray uh, kind of technologies. So we can have those standardized uh, production uh, of those microarrays so that can give good reproducibility. So you can have these results reproduced or replicated. It's hard to replicate the results with the microarrays as far as the glass arrays are concerned. Uh, you cannot uh, get the same exact uh, situation. So you can have variability uh, among your experiments. So, but uh, this FE matrix claims to control that variability. So uh, we can reproduce our results. Uh, another thing is that limited amount of uh, this prop sequence uh, that can also be complicated or that can also be a problematic. So you can miss alternative splices. It can be biased towards the ends, uh, but well, that depends upon how good your genome annotations are. Let's talk about the attachment of those sequences to the slides. So one of them is uh, they are attached covalently. So we can have those aliphatic amine groups and they are added to the five, five prime end of those probes. And then those probes are attached to the glass from um, those five prime ends using these groups. In non-covalent attachments, we can have electrostatic attraction um, between amine and phosphate on the back, on the probe's backbone. A CDN is attached to the glass by the backbone. And this happens only in CDNA microarrays. Oligonucleotides are short for this kind of interaction. So if we want to use a backbone, you must have a large or a long backbone. In uh, another scenario where we are using those uh, in situ synthesized oligonucleotide arrays, for example, we talk about FE matrix. So here the nucleotides are added one by one as far as those probes are concerned. So we have uh, a base by base addition on the array surface. There is a covalent reaction between the five prime hydroxyl and phosphate groups. And we add those protective groups on five prime position to prevent the multiple addition. So you add one nucleotide at a time in order to uh, prepare that probe in a smooth fashion. The protective group is then converted into hydroxyl group. Uh, this is how it happens. So you have those solid support. You have a base which is added. And then you add the next base. Uh, nucleotide is added. And then the OH of this base is actually protected. Here, so you see that PG, and then you can use acid or light to, you know, uh, control this process and uh, make it deprotected, and then you can continue accepting. But but at that time, at only one nucleotide is added at a time. As far as the labeling is concerned, uh, we use biotin uh, that is there in the oligonucleotide the FE matrices, and we see that this biotin is then attached to streptavidin, uh, which is attached to FICO erythrin which is a colored pigment so that then can be used to give a color display or with that colors uh, we can get the idea of those relative expressions whereas the fluorescent dyes which are used in these uh, microarrays which are glass based microarrays uh, we have CY3 uh, that is uh, it uh, ex is excited by laser at a wavelength of 532 nanometers and it gives a fluorescence green color. Sometimes it's also called as uh, dye 532. CY5 is also known as 635. So where it is excited at a wavelength of 635 nanometers. So it fluoresces red. So in microarrays, uh, we do have complementary strands of DNA and RNA. They hybridize with one another.